Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Did you know that more than half of people living with Parkinson's are short on vitamin D and that bringing your level into the sweet spot can measurably steady the way you walk? Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and with me is Alara Skye. Today you'll learn how optimizing your vitamin D, preferably from safe sun exposure, may protect your brain, improve balance, and keep your mitochondria humming. Vitamin D often gets pigeonholed as the bone health vitamin, yet it influences thousands of genes, many of them inside your brain. We'll break down the latest trials, explain why deficiency is so common in Parkinson's, and give you practical steps to raise your level to the 60 to 80 nanograms per milliliter range where research shows you gain the most benefit. Let's start with the evidence. Clinical data can feel abstract. So, put this in real-world terms. When researchers supplemented people with Parkinson's, what changes did they measure in daily movement? A 2023 review in Clinical Nutrition Open Science pooled four trials. Participants who took between 1,000 and 10,000 IU of vitamin D, three daily improved on timed walking tests, particularly the six-minute walk which mimics everyday activities like crossing a parking lot. Even modest gains in gait speed translate to greater independence in your routine. Doses from 1,000 to 10,000 IU is a widespread. Did the review find a single best amount, or is the story more nuanced? It's nuanced. Higher wasn't automatically better. People often responded best when the dose matched body weight and filled their individual deficit. That's why a blood test matters. You track your baseline, tailor your intake, and retest. The goal isn't the biggest pill, it's the right serum level. Mechanism. Now, how does vitamin D touch the circuitry that Parkinson's gradually erodes? Your brain concentrates vitamin D receptors in the substantia nigra, the region that produces dopamine and controls movement. Vitamin D switches on genes that calm inflammation and shield neurons from oxidative damage. In essence, enough vitamin D keeps the dopamine-making cells resilient slowing the cascade that stiffens motion. Yet many with Parkinson's still run low. Is that because the disease changes how you process vitamin D, or simply because aging skin makes less of it? Both. Your skin's ability to convert sunlight to vitamin D drops with age, and Parkinson's medications or digestive issues can blunt absorption. There's also evidence that chronic inflammation uses up vitamin D faster, widening the gap between intake and need. Lower vitamin D also links to weaker bones and muscles, raising fall risk, an especially urgent concern here. How significant is that overlap? It's sizable. With suboptimal vitamin D, women with Parkinson's are at higher risk for fractures, and men see similar trends. Adequate levels strengthen muscle fibers, sharpen postural control, and can temper mood swings tied to dopamine dips. That points straight to sunlight as the primary fix. Walk us through a safe sun protocol that respects skin tone and avoids burn. Head outdoors daily and expose large areas of skin until just before you turn the slightest pink. Then cover up or move to shade. If you have darker skin, extend the time gradually because melanin filters UVB. Crucially, ditch high linoleic vegetable oils for at least six months. They seed your skin with fragile fats that burn easily. Sunlight does more than make vitamin D. It even nudges your mitochondria. How does that work? Sunlight triggers mitochondrial melatonin inside your cells, an antioxidant that boosts ATP production, the energy your brain chews through by the billions each second. Efficient mitochondria mean sharper cognition and slower neurodegeneration. Beyond sunlight, what everyday choices keep those cellular power plants efficient? Replace seed oils with stable animal fats, match your carbohydrate load to your activity, and minimize endocrine-disrupting chemicals, especially microplastics. Each adjustment lowers oxidative stress that can stall mitochondrial output. Suppose a listener lives in a northern climate or works under fluorescent lights all week. How can supplements fill the gap responsibly? First, test your 25-hydroxy vitamin D. If you're below 60 nanograms per milliliter, add D3 in microcapsules or liquid drops. Reassess in three months and adjust. Most adults need 2,000 to 5,000 IU daily in winter, but some require more. Always pair the dose with fat for absorption. 
You've mentioned synergy with magnesium and vitamin K2. Why are those co-nutrients non-negotiable? Magnesium activates the enzymes that convert vitamin D to its hormonal form, and K2 directs calcium into bones instead of arteries. A study of nearly 3,000 people showed those who skipped magnesium and K2 needed 244% more vitamin D to hit the same blood level. Adding both lets you use a moderate dose efficiently. Before you adjust a single supplement dose, log how steady you feel during simple tasks, standing on one leg for 10 seconds, or rising from a chair without your hands. Pair those notes with a vitamin D blood test, and you'll have a personal baseline to revisit every quarter. That baseline matters because early gains show up as quieter foot shuffles and smoother arm swings long before you feel dramatically stronger. As your vitamin D rises into the 60 to 80 nanograms per milliliter zone, inflammation markers typically fall, signaling that your neurons are under less stress. If twice a year testing feels daunting, tie it to checkups you already keep, like dental cleanings or eye exams. Consistency beats intensity. One megadose can't replace steady, tailored exposure or supplementation matched to your lab number. Remember, vitamin D doesn't work in isolation. Quality sleep, regular resistance training, and nutrient-dense whole foods amplify its neuroprotective effect. When you combine these elements, you're not just guarding against Parkinson's. You're actively building the resilience your brain needs for decades to come. We've covered a lot, so let's pull it together. If you're listening and want to act today, where do you start? Step one, schedule a vitamin D test and note your number. Step two, spend controlled time in midday sun, bare your forearms and lower legs, and stop just shy of pink. Step three, remove seed oils, add grass-fed butter or tallow, and if needed, take D3 with your fattiest meal, plus 200 micrograms of K2 and ample magnesium. Here's your challenge. Today, Trade one processed snack cooked in seed oil for a brisk 10-minute sunlight break. Then mark how you feel during your next walk. Small shifts compound into steadier steps. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.